It's the morning after the DevConf wine and cheese, so attendance is a bit sparse, but that's okay. We're doing this for the audience online and for the recordings that will be made uh, uh, available later. So, uh, Martin and I are members of the SPI Board of Governors, and we're here to provide a, uh, a synopsis of our activities over the last year and uh, in the format of a BOF, and if there are questions either online or from the room, we're happy to take them at the end of the presentation. So we also will describe a little bit what SPI is, because we cannot be sure that everyone knows what SPI is about. So this is our agenda, um, and in fact, if we're going to give a little bit of a presentation about um, the purpose of SPI, perhaps we should do that before we dive into the board. Um, Software in the Public Interest is a registered nonprofit organization in the United States, in the, in the state of New York. Um, we exist primarily to hold the tangible assets of member organizations. We call them associated projects. Debian is the largest, but we have a number of other ones. And by tangible assets, I mean cash um, in bank accounts in the United States or trademarks or patents. We don't have any patents yet, but we could hold patents for organizations. Um, and our job, really, at the end of the day, is to do... Um, we are here to provide accounts receivable and accounts payable services for these projects that is the, the primary mission, if you will, of the organization. Yeah, we also hold domains for several projects. Sorry, yes, and domain names, which are also assets. So from Debian's perspective, we are only one of several trusted organizations. But for the other projects that we uh, are the host, um, we are the only organization that they work with. So uh, SPI started from Debian membership, um, but the people that stood it up understood that there was a need for an organization that could be pan or larger than uh, Debian alone, could offer similar services to many uh, open source organizations, whether or not they were small or large in size. So this is the agenda that we'll go through today. Um, we'll start with the board composition and directors and officers and our meeting structure. So, we had some b board changes this year. Um, uh, Jörg Jaspert, uh, a long-term board member and vice president of SPI, resigned in uh, mid of February, I think, um, and uh, due to lack of time. And uh, SPI, by its bylaws, allows that the board itself may appoint an interim director to the board, and uh, Tyler Croy from the Jenkins project, uh, and uh, one other person uh, said they are going to uh, stand for that, and the board finally appointed Tyler Croy as an interim director in, uh, in March during its uh, monthly uh, online meeting. Um, we were in the position um, a few years ago where um, so usually um, board of directors uh, is a three-year term. For, uh, so you, if you stand up for, for a board of director at SPI, you're getting voted for, for three years. And we usually have uh, three persons. The board consists of nine persons in total. And um, we usually have like three persons uh, a year standing up for vote. Um, that shifted a little bit a few years ago because of um, several persons uh, resigning and we were in the position where we suddenly had like five persons that needed to be voted on and to get to go back to a three by three by three um, vote again, uh, Luca um, resigned this year early um, to get re-elected this year, so we in the beginning, so with the beginning term now uh, in the ne uh, with the next meeting in August, we are back to 3-3-3 three, 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 um, again. So um, we had um, the 
uh, the vote for the board of directors the last th two weeks, three yeah. weeks. Uh, and the actual uh, vote result came out on um, Fri Noodles Friday last week. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, um, uh, sadly, Tyler Croy was, uh, usually you get, um, you stand up for vote uh, when you get uh, uh, appointed as an interim director. Sadly, uh, Tyler Croy did not got re-elected. Stephen Frost got re-elected. Michael Schultheis got re-elected. And Luca Filippossi got re-elected for this year's vote. So thank you for all those people for nominating themselves. Yeah. And thanks for everybody who voted. Um, I actually don't know what the voting statistics are in terms of the number of unique votes. I don't think that was included in the email, but... Um, Turn the mic on. No, you're, you're not oh, live, it's sir. It's on. I've got, a, I've got a green line. Yeah, okay. Um, it was only about 40 people voted in the election. I think we've got somewhere between two and 300 contributing members at the minute who could have voted. Yeah. Um, I, I did actually talk to a couple of contributing members who weren't voting and they explained that um, they didn't feel they could make an informed decision. They didn't know any of the candidates well enough to be able to distinguish between them and weren't particularly, oh my God, this candidate's amazing or this candidate's uh, someone I definitely don't want in and that's why they didn't vote. So it wasn't a, that they weren't engaged, it was that they didn't feel that they could that would be voting for the sake of voting. Okay. So I did ask a few people. So as of August 2018, then, the board of directors of SPI are the following individuals. Myself, Stephen Frost, uh, Jimmy Kaplowitz, Martin Micklemeyer, Tim Potter, Michael Schulteis, Andrew Trigel, hope I didn't butcher that name, Valerie Young, and Martin Zobahelas. And the officers uh, currently are Martin, myself, Valerie, and Michael, but that changes in the next two weeks at our next meeting. Since we just had the election, uh, we cycle the officers every year. The board elects its own officers from its membership. So uh, from that previous slide, those are the people eligible to be the officers. And I'll finish with this one and then we can switch. Uh, board meetings, we meet every month online in IRC um, in the SPI channel. Um, I just recently changed the configuration there so you do need to be registered in order to speak in the channel because of the spam that we've been receiving. Um, but we're there every month um, and we advertise the meetings in advance and the agendas in advance on the SPI announced mailing list so please check that mailing list The link is at the final slide I believe. Um, finally, we do meet once per year. We started this uh, in 2016, I believe. And uh, the intent here is to spend some time together as a board, since not, some of us don't know each other, and to really focus on vision strategy, uh, roadmap, and operational uh, concerns. It's, in effect, the SPI board sprint. Um, we do it every year in New York. We are a New York registered organization, so it's appropriate to do it in New York. We currently meet at our lawyer's office uh, so that we have uh, client confidentiality, um, but we could meet somewhere else this year. Uh, we're talking about venues, but uh, the intent is to uh, have this sprint. So if there are things that you want us to be working on, now's the time to bring them up because it's really during those sprints that we try to make uh, progress on them. Um. Also, we try to keep the face-to-face -face meeting um, close to the vote we had, so we can actually do some onboarding with the new team members of the board. Uh, board sorry. Yeah, um, I looked up um, some of the membership statistics. We had um, Five, over 500 active contributing members in uh, 2016, and then this number decreased very much uh, in 2017, but that's due to the fact that we, or uh, uh, Jonathan did a membership ping uh, to all of the contributing members, and a lot of uh, contributing, well, at that time contributing members, either said they won't 
be active any longer or they didn't respond to the pings. So um, that's the reason why this number decreased uh, so much. Um, yeah. So the, the, the key point here is that we uh, in, embarked on a membership cleanup over the last little while because we have a bylaw revamp and the current bylaw uh, bylaws are written in such a way that the quorum necessary to get revisions passed is extremely, the bar is very high. The next revision, uh, the bar is lower um, and we need a uh, a roster that reflects the, the active membership so that when we send out the vote for um, uh, the vote request for the new bylaws we are not sending it to a population that we, we could never achieve quorum on because they're not active. So um, you, people may not have been active in the uh, in the election of board officers and your explanation was helpful thank you but we really do need people to make an effort on voting on the bylaws. There are important changes in there, one of which is the quorum requirement for future bylaw changes. Um, it will leave us somewhat paralyzed if we can never, never even propose minor bylaw changes and meet this enormously high uh, quorum requirement. And especially as a lot of co uh, active contributing members are Debian developers, um, please, uh, if you see the vote on the bylaws, go vote. Go and vote on it. So membership applications, uh, SPI is not, membership in SPI is not limited to people who are part of an associated project. So uh, you may make an application, you can become a non-contributing member, uh, you can also make an application to become a contributing member. Uh, the contributing members are the ones that then are offered the opportunity to vote. It's the only real differentiating factor, but it's an important factor. SPI exists to support these organizations in their administrative responsibilities. So it's not as fun as some of the other duties that people might take on, but it's stuff that needs to, needs to get done. You need to be an active member to be on the board. And you need to be an active member to be on the board. We've had some changes in the project roster. Um, Freedom Box became their own. A, um, 501 C3. C3, C3 and uh, some projects cease to operate and we're in the process of uh, cleaning that up to, um, to prepare some re uh, board resolutions to dispose of their assets if any etc. Um, we are already in contact with them, some of them do respond, some don't. Um, Mad Wi-Fi, for example, uh, responded recently that they want their funds to be transferred to another uh, um, SPI associated project, which is fine. And we have several that are uh, seeking to be onboarded, but um, until that concludes, I'm not going to enumerate them on the slide. And this came, uh, sorry, we didn't do a good job of getting all of these logos uh, into the slide deck. This is from the annual report, the last page of the annual report. Which um, has been published uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, just before the vote. So um, again, Debian is the largest uh, member of SPI, associated project in SPI, but we uh, provide services to 40 plus organizations. Um, uh, some of which you may know or use even at home yourself, like OpenWRT or what have you. OFTC, if you're um, on IRC, Postgres, for example. Then there's zero ID, the Zero ID game, um, Jenkins, Jenkins, for yeah. example, the uh, LibreOffice, um, uh, Open Document Foundation, Arc Linux, just to list a few. Arc Linux 32 as well as onboarding. Okay. Was yeah, it? I can give a little bit uh, feedback of the financial position of SPI. Um, we changed a lot uh, regarding um, the treasuring process in the past one and a half years. Uh, I'm becoming more and more assistant uh, tr uh, treasurer to SPI and uh, we also changed the uh, way we are um, processing uh, financial data um, as it becomes more and more crucial to um, SPI as we are holding a lot of assets as you can see. Um, 
we also moved a lot of um, uh, money around, uh, as you might see uh, last year. Um, most of that is, um, were two or three, uh, no, actually three uh, big conference. One of was um, DebConf last year. Uh, the other two were a Libra Office conference and a conference from the uh, Xorg Foundation. Um, um, so, um, and we had generous uh, donations uh, in the past years uh, to both uh, our associated projects and directly to SPI. So, if you are looking at the uh, total amount that SPI owns, uh, that's more or less uh, due to a very genius donation from Craigslist in the past, uh, ongoing uh, over the past three years. Um, we hold a little bit more than a million US dollar uh, in trust in total, um, where of uh, 800,000, uh, nearly 900,000 uh, with the associated projects. So recent accomplishments over the last year, um, as Zobel mentioned, there have been uh, financial process improvements. Uh, we're trying to get the annual reports out in a more timely fashion. Um, we moved uh, from the previous first past the post kind of voting me me method to single transferable vote. Which was actually in 2016, I think the, uh, this year was the first year where we actually voted uh, with uh, this uh, vote mechanism last year, we didn't have any vote ongoing because we had three officers uh, up for vote. No, two, uh, two two officers up for vote and uh, two officers standing, so we didn't need to vote last year. Uh, we implemented a virtual mailing address and phone number, by which I mean um, there are services around the United States that offer the ability to accept mail, physical mail. They scan the envelope, you ask them to open it, they scan the content. If it's a check, we can ask them to deposit it to the bank. Um, this has been very helpful because in the past we used to use a post office box close to Michael's house and Michael sometimes didn't have an opportunity to swing by uh, frequently. Uh, with this mechanism, Michael can deposit checks with the click of a mouse. Which is done, by, um, actually done nowadays by uh, T uh, Martin Michael-Meyer and me and um, yeah, uh, we also get all the um, uh, the nice thing we, uh, is we can also um, archive all the stuff uh, that goes to our post address as a PDF. We directly get it scanned every time a, uh, um, a letter comes in, so we actually have uh, a track of what comes in and uh, have that in a version control system. So we do have all the data at one single place now. So it sounds like a minor thing, but it's a, been a pretty dramatic improvement to the flow of incoming donations. Um, and we also have a Google Voice phone number. It only goes to voicemail at the moment, but uh, we acquired that for identity verification purposes. So we've had a need in a couple of times to acquire an extended validation domain, uh, sorry, extended validation X509 certificate for a particular domain. And uh, the various registrars have different processes by which they do extended validation, some of which include phoning the organization at the number of their business. So they leave a voicemail, we call them back, and we tell them, yes, we really are uh, the parent organization for Debian, at least as far as the United States is concerned, and we approve the uh, um, the uh, the release of a uh, X509 certificate. And also um, individual members of the board of directors have uh, Google Voice numbers nowadays, which makes it easier, for example, uh, getting in contact with a US bank without them asking why are you, why are you calling from a Japanese or German or Austria, uh, Australian number, which uh, they might, might consider as fraud yeah, so it's been, it's been interesting trying to explain to organizations the virtual nature of SPI, let's put it that way. And the fact that we're international in, in structure and we have board members that are not necessarily U.S. citizens. 
Um, the last two sprints that I've attended, uh, we've spent a lot of time and energy focusing on clarity of mission and governance improvements. Uh, so I, I led the conversation at this BOF by saying that at the end of the day, our job is to hold a pile of assets and to do accounts payable and accounts receivable. So that's the kind of um, position statement I've been making at these face-to-face these -face meetings and uh, my fellow board members have come round to that viewpoint. We need to be able to do the basics of what SPI is intended to do before we step up and try to do other services for associated projects. Um, so the last year has seen some process improvements. The DEBCOF 17 reimbursement, for example, was different and was uh, better. We've, um, we've uh, uh, expanded a team of people to work on treasury-related items. It was just Michael at the beginning. Now uh, there are nearly four people that do it on a regular basis. I've identified uh, a staff member from the university where I work. She used to work for me, uh, Sabrina. Um, she does accounts payable and receivable as her day job, and she's now SPI to bolt the team. So, um, uh, so what we hope to have uh, over the next year is time amongst the new to spend time training. This is not working? Okay. Let me turn it off permanently. So what we hope to have is time over the next, time over the next year to get Sabrina trained. Uh, so Sabrina doesn't know Git necessarily and doesn't know Ledger, so we need to get her in that direction. But in terms of helping us document policies and procedures around the reimbursement process and then actually executing the reimbursement process to the point where she's authorized to do the funds transfers uh, uh, is where we want to get to in the next year. Also, uh, also one of the um huge things we achieved uh, uh, in the past year is uh, getting a director's and office officer's liability insurance, which is um, some sort of crucial in the US to have. So um, um, it took us a while to uh, find an organization in the US um, that uh, covers our one, uh, 501c3 organization, but that finally worked out uh, and that got signed, uh, I think, October or November last year. So, um, Director Insurance, um, we Close we're personally life. liable for we're personally liable for the activities of SPI directors are, and so Director Insurance is so that I don't lose my house if SPI gets sued by somebody and wins. Because otherwise, why would, why would anybody become an SPI director if they're personally liable for the activities of the organization? And another thing that we have been working on the past two years uh, are the new bylaws. They are, got completely rewritten and um, uh, we had a, um, a lawyer reviewing the new bylaws or actually helping us to write the new bylaws. Um, and thanks to Jimmy Kaplowitz as board member and Ian Jackson being very helpful on the uh, SPI mailing list um, uh, to actually get the, uh, the new bylaws uh, in a way that the associated projects want it, but also as the board wants to have it. So again, please uh, get out the vote. Okay, future objectives. Um, again, back to that idea that our primary goal is asset management and accounts payable and accounts receivable. Uh, we need to get away from the single point of failure. We've done that quite a bit with the now four board members doing the work. Um, we need to document everything. So there's a lot of information in the head of Michael or TBM or what have you. We need to get that down on paper. Um, we need to be able to survive a large-scale board transition without having to always go back and ask questions of, of previous directors. 
Um, we need more rigorous processes. Um, uh, right now, uh, I think uh, we don't transition, for example, all of the signing authorities of the bank accounts on a timely fashion. That's part of the reason for doing the face-to-face -face in New York, is so that if we change the officers and we want different signing authorities to match the officers of the organization, we can go to the three or four banks where we do business and we can do a, um, and we can do a, a signing officer change. Um, we don't have an, a written expense policy, so the associated uh, organizations might have an expense policy, but many do not. So the idea is that we would uh, prepare an expense policy for SPI that would be applicable to all associated projects unless they wrote their own to supersede it. Um, and that way we can get away from is this a legitimate expense or not legitimate expense kind of debate, uh, which happens a little bit, it doesn't happen too frequently, but again, back to the idea of being more rigorous, we do need to write down uh, what we believe is an appropriate expense for an open source and kind of organization. This becomes more and more important as uh, the amount of SPI money, the, the amount of money SPI currently uh, holds in trust. We will, uh, in very near future, need to do an official financial audit of um, our uh, bookkeeping and they will probably also give us advice at um, what we can expand in which way as we are currently doing. So the intent is for the SPI policy to be applied to all projects unless the project writes their own. So Debian just has to write their own expense policy indicating what is appropriate or not appropriate from an expense perspective. Um, uh, this isn't meant to be draconian. This is just meant to cover cases where nobody has spent the time and energy to write their own expense policy. We are working on more regular report. Recently, we got a little bit stuck uh, with the monthly reports we try to publish um, because we uh, needed to finish the annual report, um, which was a little bit of a hassle because um, uh, one of our banking systems changed their API where we could get all the transactions from, and it took us like three months to get it in a, in a way that we can automatically process it with Ledger. Uh, and this is one of the accounts which has the most transactions uh, overall. So we had like, uh, I think f uh, we started with like 500 to 600 uh, transactions to process manually instead of automatically to get the financial report done. And one of our other board members is keen on building the appropriate extracts from Ledger uh, to then post them on our, on our website in a password protected space in order to allow for projects to go pull the reports themselves. And as Luca already, already said, we are getting a help, a paid help to streamline the reimbursement process using RT and trying to document that workflow more. So if you want to get involved with us, um, as mentioned, we have public meetings that are held monthly in the SPI channel on uh, OFTC. Uh, the agendas are announced in advance. Uh, so if there's a topic that you want to discuss, please make sure that you uh, reply to the secretary when the first announcement comes out so it gets added to the agenda. We try very hard not to add on the fly agenda items during the meeting because we feel that that is inappropriate for people who may have chosen not to attend the meeting because it didn't have a topic of interest to them. So we are formal, we publish agendas, we discuss the things that are on the agenda at the meeting. If you want something discussed, please let us know. Uh, between uh, those formal meetings, we are always uh, on the mailing list um, or uh, available in the channel. Um, there are a variety of mailing lists. Uh, please uh, check them out. And finally, uh, of the board members, um, Martin and I are here. So if you have questions about SPI or you'd like us to uh, address something, please seek us out. So, questions.
was a question from IRC from Zumbi. Um, do you have a timeline for getting the website to publish reports? No, it's just only started as a glimmer of a thought. Probably. I, I actually would like to come back to report monthly, but um, uh, report monthly uh, as we are, uh, as the monthly reports go, um, I can't say what the timeline will be for getting, uh, what Hector is asking, uh, asking for is um, the, um, uh, because I spoke to him here at DebConf yesterday, he wants to have uh, the transaction for DebConf uh, to be online on the website for DebConf to review. Um, that's something we are still working, uh, TBM is currently trying to extract that from Ledger per project, but we are not in a position yet where we can actually give out all, uh, every single transaction to a, to, to a project. Um, I would also like to see that happen uh, in, during, hopefully, next uh, this in, in the coming year. More questions? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Any more questions or are people still uh, trying to wake up from last night's cheese and wine party? Okay, I think we'll call yeah. it then. Oh, there is one Sorry, more. One more question. Question. That's actually a good point. We could uh, we could move them a little bit rather than having them always at the same time. So yes. currently, the um, the online meetings are optimized um, in a way that um, all uh, SPI board members can attend, and we do have two SPI board members from Australia um, getting up at I think five o'clock in the morning to attend the meetings. Um, some of us. Uh, are just going to bed uh, in Europe, and the others uh, are in the uh, mid. I, I'm, I'm foregoing my lunch in order to attend a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a good point. We'll bring it up at the first meeting of the next meeting of the of the board as to whether or not we should have a bit of a rotating, a moving schedule so that we can accommodate more people. What you what you could do is bring that uh, uh, topic up on the SPI discuss mailing list. Um, for the um, board members to look into that if we can a little bit shift per meeting uh, so uh, people from different time zones uh, do have the possibility to attend at least a few meetings a year. Thank you. It seems we do not have any more questions. Uh, I do have a few stickers from SPI in the front so in case you want stickers just come to the front, take a few, and leave a few for others. Yeah, then, thank you, and catch us here if you do have questions which you do not want to ask now during the question session of our SPI buff. Thanks very much. <laughs>